Hello and welcome to the first of our discussions on time series. Uh, and today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about time series decomposition. So if you're in class with me, welcome, welcome. Uh, the data set that we're gonna be using will be under the time series area on Canvas. Specifically, it'll be called um, Airline Passengers Update, and I'll show you where that is in a second. If you happen to just fumble across this, looking for help with time series forecasting or time series decomposition, Welcome as well. Hopefully I can help you out a little bit. And of course, if you have questions, feel free to shoot them to me uh, in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if of course you're in class with me, you guys have my personal email, you got my cell phone, you know how to text me if you need anything. So I just wanna jump right in, talk to you a little bit about time series and what we're gonna do today, time series decomposition. So everything we've done in class so far has been all about cross-sectional data. So let me give you an example. The data that you're looking at in front of you would be the population of New York City. So if you look at 2010 here, this is a current snapshot at a moment in time. So say December 31st, 2010, this is the current population of all of the boroughs. So this is Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and so on, right? So at the end of the year, this is exactly what we were having at that specific moment in time. So this is different from time series data. So the way time series data works is we're gonna look at the observation, say Bronx, and we're gonna look at how the population of the Bronx changes over time, right? And we look at it and see it's growing, 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 right? So instead of looking at every borough at one moment in time, we're looking at just the Bronx and its change over time, okay? Now you can look at multiples too and their change over time, but in this particular example for now, we'll just look at Bronx and how that changes over time. So now when you talk about time series analysis, when you talk about the change in data over time, oftentimes if you visualize it, you'll get something that we call the signal, okay? Um, and it's just visualizing how that data is changing over time. Now the signal is actually comprised of four different things. It's comprised of, let me skip forward to you, there you go. It's comprised of level, trend, seasonality, and noise. So let's talk about what each one of those things would be. So all four of the things that you see here are comprised in the signal. So this can be broken down into this. So what does that mean? So the level, think of it sort of like the level on the volume of your computer. So like the, the total overall abundance of your data. Um, key components that you wanna pay attention to is that trend and seasonality, trend and seasonality may or may not be there. So sometimes your data has a trend, sometimes your data doesn't. Sometimes your data is seasonal in nature, meaning it's got some kind of repetition to it, sometimes it's not. Um, we wouldn't know that, but one of the things we can figure out through decomposition is if it's got trend and seasonality, right? So the only thing that's guaranteed when you decompose your data is that you're gonna have some kind of level, so it'll show you the intensity of your data, the average of your, of your values of the data set changing over time. So you'll get that, right? So level. Um, or the residual or the noise, for example. So the noise would be the part that is unexplained phenomena within your data. Like we just don't know why it's happening. There's something that's happening there. So level, trend, seasonality, and noise. So now the way you're able to turn this into a combination of the four of these is through something called time series decomposition. That's what we're going to do today. So the time series decomposition models that we have to work with, there's two of them. One is called the additive model and one is called the multiplicative model. They're pretty easy to remember. It's just simply taking those four components and either adding them together, like so, or multiplying them together. So level, trend, seasonality, noise, multiplied all together. Okay. Now keep, keep these in mind, additive model and multiplicative model, because when we get into Python and Jupyter Notebooks, we will select either additive model or multiplicative model to work with. And we'll talk a little bit about the best options to choose once we dig into it. So now in the interest of time, because this is going to get kind of lengthy, let's jump out of this. Let's go into Google Colab and see what we can get into. So now I've already taken my airline passengers update file. Uh, and added it to my Google Drive. If you have not, if you go to Canvas, you will find um, under the time series section that airlines data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our two go-to um, libraries to start. So we're gonna import pandas and we're gonna import matplotlib. Ah. Okay, so that's all we need to get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read my airline passengers, uh, pd.read, 
underscore Excel. Uh, read my airline passengers data into a data frame just so we can take a look at it. So here's what we see. So we see that it is organized in months, okay? Um, so month, 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 and it's gonna go all the way down to, I wanna say 2014. Um, and then additionally, you'll see we have airport passengers. Now, one of the things that's gonna happen here is when we get into our model a little bit more, so if I look at the tail, it's gonna get kind of confused because if I get at the end, see, well, actually, nope, we don't. We actually have an entire year here. So we're pretty good to go. So we've got uh, an even set of years. So starting from 2009, Going all the way to 2012, we have every month of our data. So this is good. So we can explore this a little bit first just to see the signal. So if you just wanted to see the signal of the data, I can do um, plt.plot and we can plot our airline, I think it's airline passengers, airport passengers. And if we just wanna see it, there we go. We can see it, all right, we've got something there. So now, as you know, this is a combination of level, seasonality, trend, and noise. And the goal of this exercise is to split this into four to truly gain more insight into what we have. Because it kind of looks like it's seasonal, but it, and it definitely looks like there's an upward moving trend, but we want to squeeze away or peel away the noise before we continue to work with that. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna fiddle around with this a little bit. So what are we gonna do? So we are going to need to import some additional libraries and we're also gonna change the name just to make life easier because this says date, but I'm actually gonna change the name from date to month of this column just to make life a little bit easier in a second. So what we're gonna do is pull in some additional libraries that we're gonna need. So the first library that we are going to need is going to be stats model. So from stats models, and it's models with an S, um, time series analysis, so tsa.seasonal, we want to import um, seasonal decomposition, or seasonal decompose. All right, so we know we need that. Um, what else are we gonna need? So we are also going to need our metrics if we want to evaluate what we're doing in a little bit. So we're gonna say from sklearn.metrics, we will import our mean square error. And I'll show you what we'll do with that a little bit later. So along the way, so if you're completely new to this and you're not already familiar with what pandas and matplotlib is, and stats model and SK learn, you might want to go back a little bit in the playlist of this to the very beginning, uh, first couple videos from class that talk about pandas and SK learn libraries just in general. Because at this point, seeing as this is a week before the end of the semester, kind of assume you know how all that stuff works. Okay. So we're bringing in SK learn uh, for the mean squared error. So we can check our, our error between our predicted values and our actual values. We're bringing in uh, TSA, so time series analysis decompose. And then we already had pandas and matplotlib. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this from date to month just to make my life a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and we'll do df.rename. Um, and we are going to rename uh, date to month. And we want that to be axis one because it's a column. And we want that to stay. So we're gonna say in place equals true, like so. So now when I look at it, I should have month instead of date. So that's good. So the next thing I need to do is I'm actually gonna convert this to month. So I'm gonna use the date time feature inside pandas to actually tell it that it is indeed date time to make sure that it is a month. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that DF month uh, and then I'm going to say equals PD dot to date. Uh, if I could spell, I've got all kinds of stuff on my keyboard here. To date time uh, and I'm going to take the DF month column like so. All right, so we're moving right along. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to replace the default index. So let me talk to you about what that is for just a second here. So if I just look at the head, 
The default index for any pandas data frame is just simply sequential numbers. So it starts at zero and then it counts up. So the first row, as you know, in pandas index always starts at zero, is row zero. Then it goes up one, two, three, four. Just keeps on going, 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 okay? So in this particular case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the default index from continuous numbers like this to the actual dates themselves, right? So we wanna look at the first date and then look at the airline passengers, look at the second date, then look at the airline passengers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the set index option here. So I'm gonna say df.setindex. And I wanna set the index to month. Uh, and we want that to stay as well. So now when I look at this, I've replaced my serial numbers or my index, uh, which were default here. Let's look at it this way. There we go. So now I've replaced those continuous numbers starting at zero going up to the actual date. So there's the first month, there's the second month, there's the third month, there's the fourth month, there's all my passengers, okay? So at this point, life is really easy. At this point, what we're gonna wanna do here is we are going to want to, and here I'm gonna move this over because I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint here in just a second. There we go. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to create our actual model. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the seasonal decompose feature that we just imported that library. So I'm gonna create a variable called components and I'm gonna use seasonal, uh, decom seasonal underscore decompose and I'm going to feed it my passenger data, right? So I wanna actually look at the passengers as they change over time. So I'm gonna feed it in my uh, airport passengers. Now this is where it gets tricky again. And there's a couple different things that are gonna happen. So we are going to need to tell it what model to use, right? Remember I told you there's two, there's additive and there's multiplicative. So let me quickly show you the best option here. So there's a couple different rules of thumb that you could play around with here. And one of them is uh, if the seasonality changes, so if it's not the same variance in seasonality over time, one rule of thumb would be to simply uh, go with multiplicative versus additive. The other rule of thumb is uh, whichever one gives you the flattest noise. So if I look at the noise, that's gonna come out here in just a second, whichever one gives me the flattest noise amount right, so the least variance in noise, then that's gonna be the model that I wanna use. Two different ways, and it's, it's actually pretty easy to change. So when in doubt, you could just try one and try the other, um, or use the method that we talked about before. So just to get kicked off here, because we don't know, I'll just go with multiplicative and hope I spell it right. And there's an optional parameter that we may or may not need, so let's see if we need it. We did not but sometimes there is, so there, I just wanna to touch on that for just a second. So there's an optional parameter in here called period. See this? And at the beginning of the video, you saw me check because in my mind, I thought that maybe we didn't have an entire year at the end. So we had, we've, we've got 12 months of data for, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. And I, in my mind, I thought that last year, so 2014, I think is the end, we didn't have all of that year. So we had a partial year. So if that's the case, it can cause some issues when you're going through doing the seasonal decompose, and it may give you an error saying you have uneven periods. If you get that error, you'll have to use this optional argument here called period, and then you'll specify what the period is. In this particular case, didn't have to do it. I thought I was going to have to, and I didn't. Now, this is the cool part. Okay, so now at this point, I actually have the ability to plot this. So I can actually see what I've done. So I can go uh, components dot plot. And then from there, let's do plt dot show. And voila, you have yourself a decomposition. And if I look at this, it's actually pretty good as it is. I doubt if I switch it to additive, if it's gonna get any better, but I could try it. it definitely got worse. So we do not want to do that. So here's, here's look at the noise. See how this changes so much? That's not great. We don't love that. So we're going to jump up here and we are going to change this back to multiplicative, multiplicative. And boom, we're good. 
So that is your time series decomposition, right? So we've taken our original signal that we had up at the top. Our original signal is right here. And we have broken that into the four components that we wanted to explore a little bit more. The four components being um, level, trend, obviously it's trending up, seasonality, which looks to be pretty even across the board there, and noise, okay? So there's two more things that we need to touch on. Um, and I'm gonna break them into part two and part three. So this was part one of the video series. We also need to talk about moving averages. And then we also wanna look at regressing based on time series data. So now in order to regress based on time series data, you're going to need to know how to decompose first. So it's a good thing that you stopped at this video before you jumped to the part that you're probably trying to get to, which is the regression part. So with that friends, I will stop for now. You'll see another couple parts of videos popping up here in just a few. So if you have any questions, of course, shoot me an email, shoot me a text message, give me a shout. Um, as I, as the young kids say out there, like and subscribe because I like do this for free. I just really enjoy doing it and I'm happy to know that somebody out there is a big old nerd like me and gains some enjoyment from, from doing some of this. So with that, friends, I will stop for the day and we will talk to you again soon.